Welcome. Benvenido. We are from Nuestras Raíces, and we're going to do we're going to do a demonstration today about the ofrenda, the altar that was used during the Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead celebration, and what people do at home. This is a very basic demonstration. We're going to be very informal. It's not a formal. Um, you have to take notes or anything. We're just going to talk a little bit about it. And hopefully, you remember why we put things on there. It's so you understand what everything represents on the ofrenda when you actually go and see someone's ofrenda and why they were put them up there. My name is Becca Savano Dilap, and I'm a member of Nuestra Raíces. My name is Lydia Quiroz Anaya. I'm the president right now of Nuestra Raíces. And like Becca said, we're just going to do a small demonstration and show you how to set one up and what, like she said, what everything stands for as we put them on the table. As we start today, we're just going to show you that most families, when they're building them, uh, don't have elaborate altars. They start with paper box. They start with cardboard boxes. They build them, and the reason we build in tiers, when you see them, they're built in different tiers, is a representation of the uh, pyramids from the Aztecs. So they actually started celebrating death. The Aztecs did thousands of years ago, and we um, and as Christianity came in and moved in to being just a couple of days, on November first, November second, just as the, uh, the Christianity with All Saints Day and All Souls Day. So we celebrate in the same time. First day is for the children. And then the next, uh, the second is for the adults. So we're going to go ahead and start demonstrating, and as we go along, we'll tell you what each item represents that we place on the open of that. Jerry, getting ready for this special day, a lot of the families spend a lot of time and money getting ready. They go to these big marketplaces where they have some of the items that they will need to put on their ofrenda. So we're going to start. I like I said, we build them up like the pyramids. It also represents the four elements, the four seasons, and that's why some of them will have the four tiers. And we like to put a lot of color into our ofrenda, so that's why. Because so many colors, so we like to different colors. So we'll do that. One of the main things that you will notice is that uh, we we use this that often, but. We like, and one of the main things is to put a white tabletop over everything. So we will do that. And uh, let's read that. We will just use a white tabletop. And one of the things, one of the things we'd like to do is we put a statue or a picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe because for a lot of the Hispanic families, she's the patron saint of all the Latin countries. So we put her on the first, on the top. Yeah. On the top. If most of some families uh, usually just blend in the saints and they wouldn't put a member of the family that they're honoring for that specific friend that they would put their picture on top. So you'll see that as well. So the next thing we'll do is we will put um, items on the agenda that represents the different things um, why we would do this. So one of the main things is that we are inviting their spirits home. We're inviting them back to celebrate with us when they come back. So we're, like Lydia said, we are making sure that we have all the elements, the four elements. We want water, fire, food, and wind. So earth, wind, and fire, basically. And so we will do that. And we do fire, we represent that with candles. So we have uh, three specific color of candles we use are on the ofrenda, but they're not the only colors that are on the ofrenda. But these represent specific things. The pink, the purple, let's start with purple. Purple is for the Catholicism. The Catholicism uh, represents pain, suffering, so that usually is on the bottom level. The second candle is pink, and that represents a celebration and joy. And we usually put that on the second tier. The last one is white, and that's for purity and satisfaction. So we 
we have those three, and the, but you'll see multiple colors. You'll see red for blood. You'll see multiple different colors that they use um, in the open. The, the Aztecs, obviously, they made sacrifices, human sacrifices, and, uh, but that's not what we do anymore. So we uh, want to make sure that we let people know that we are, we are, do have some sympathy and for this and there's some suffering for the death, the loss of someone. And so that's why we do have the purple. But we want to make sure that everybody understands that this is not a sad celebration. This is a joyous celebration. We want people to remember their family members and invite their souls and spirits back to celebrate with them. So on that, we like to place items on the ofrenda that provide them uh, with joy that they had when they were living and represent, and they represent things to us that we remember about them. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. So one of the first things that you will do on your ofrenda is to make sure you put the picture of who, of one of your loved ones. So I'm going to put my daughter's picture, and you can put her on the side or wherever you'd like. I'm going to put her on this. Yeah. And I'm going to do one of my mother. I'm just going to place a photo of my mother, and she'll just go down here. Another thing that we like to do is we like to place items that they, that we remember about them. So the one thing I remember is my mother wore uh, pearls. She used to wear pearls. And she gave me a set of pearls when I was growing up. So I brought those and I remember that. Another thing is that I always remember my mother wearing lipstick. Always. Didn't matter where she was going. Uh, she was just going to the grocery store. She always remembered that she always wore lipstick. So I always wanted to remember to bring, bring her a little bit of lipstick to put on. So when she comes back to visit us, her lipstick's there and she looks good. So we want to make sure that they always have what they enjoy. All right. Now we put something that they did in their life while they were alive. Uh, my daughter was a uh, big sister. She won one year in 2015. Sister, the big. And she also did a lot of volunteering with our police department. She has all these pins that she got. She was with them for, volunteered with them for over 20 years. So I'm gonna put that right next to her also. What? It's happened. She don't want to see it. And then, it, this is very therapeutic. I know you can't see me right now, but this is a very therapeutic way to deal with death. We talk about um, who they were, what they were, what they were to us. We remember their joys, what they, and, and some of the sorrows sometimes. So, um, one of the things we do is, since we put fire on the ofrenda, one of the other things we put on there is food and that is the earth. So we, my mother liked orange slices. So I brought her a little bit of orange slices. She liked coffee, so I would put a coffee cup in remembrance of her. So you put things that they enjoyed. I know my daughter loved Pepsis, and I always told her, I don't think you have blood running through your veins. I think you have Pepsi in it. Cause she used to have to have at least one Pepsi a day. So I'm going to put that on her ofrenda. That will be one of the food items that we like to put on there. Another thing we do is we put water for them. When we do it two different ways, we put water for them to drink to quench their thirst when they get back for when they come back to visit us. So we provide them water to quench their thirst. We also have water for them to cleanse. So. By doing that, we provide them a place to clean themselves when they come back from the other from the other room. So we provide them with an opportunity to get clean. So we provide them with water, a bowl, a mirror, a hairbrush, and soap, so they can uh, cleanse themselves. So hey, there's nothing like a good-looking spirit, let me tell you. So we <laughs> want them to make sure that they uh, look good for us, and they always want to look good for us. Another thing we provide is salt, and it's for purification and for flavoring their food. So we provide salt on the ofrenda. That is one of the must hats on your ofrenda, is your three different colored candles, and the water and the salt. 
like we said, they've come a long way to join us, so we want to make sure that we have something for them to freshen up as they join the big feast. So another thing we put on there is calaveras. Calavera and um, calaveras is a full body, and uh, what's the cut? The hair. Calacas is the full body, and the calavera yes. is a head. So what we like to do is we demonstrate. We put items on our fender from the either calacas or calavera that represent them. They're more whimsical. They're not meant to be scary. This is not Halloween. This is really a celebration of life. So we like to place items on the ofrenda that remind us, and we look at their characters, the little characters that we buy specifically to represent them. So I'm going to get a couple of uh, items. What Becca mentioned earlier too was on October the 31st, they don't celebrate Halloween. What they do is they prepare a special table for the children because on October 31st at midnight is when they believe the heaven gates are open and all the children come down to be with the family. So they put a lot of their favorite toys and food in the ofrenda for the children. So like I said, we like to put calacas or calaveras on the ofrenda. This one is made of sugar. And we make them out of sugar. You can buy molds to make them and decorate them. They are kind of heavy. They take a little while to make. You can get molds online from MexicanSugarSkull.com and make molds. They come in different sizes. So it takes a little while to make them. They're not hard to make. They're just kind of time consuming. So we have a calavera. If people in Flagstaff wanted to find a place to buy them soon, how could they do that? Our, on our website and, and on our Facebook page, and also on the museum's Facebook, uh, we, they can contact Mrs. Reyes's, my staff, Mrs. Reyes's, or Northern Arizona Museum, and they can get a link. And we have sugar skulls already made, and we're putting a little kit together for you to purchase, and we're selling for ten dollars. So you can contact us. There's a number on the website and on the Facebook that you could get those from. So we have um, a calavera or a, a character that are whimsical, and we try to make sure that we have one to represent everyone that's on the ofrenda. So in this case, we have two people. So we would technically just need two, but we have uh, different characters. This woman reminded me of my mother because she always liked to get dressed up and things before she went out. So she is a Katrina, and Katrina is one of the things that you'll see um, a lot of the, the lady that's dressed. She's a parody of the French, and I can't remember the name of the artist that uh, drew her just to make fun of the French women back in the um, six, uh, 1500s, 1600s, no, 1700s. And uh, she was just making, he was just making fun of the, the French women because they were all dressed up all the time in Mexico, and all the peasants were dressed in barely whatever they could wear. So, they were all in feathers and everything. So we uh, so I put an item on here to represent her. So we have our so we have our calacas to represent. And then you of course you want to make sure that you put one extra on the ofrenda to represent someone you forgot. We don't want angry spirits. We want and that's the same. Thank you for the candles. You make sure you have a candle for each person on your ofrenda, and you always put an extra one, just in case you forgot someone. So we have fire, we have water, we have we salt for purification, and now we, we need bread. bread. We get the bread. Bread is part of so to represent the of earth, so we provide the bounty of the earth, which is the food. So we have bread, and usually it would be a uh, bread that we normally call pan de muerto. But because we're doing this very early in the season, and we're recording this very early, and we're building this ofrenda, we hadn't had time to really make any for this pan de muerto for this demonstration. But these are strange times, and I'm not sure it would be a good idea to put fresh food on the ofrenda anyway, for this presentation. So um, the bread, so we have the earth, 
We have fire, we have water, so the next thing we would need is wind. And what we do is we call wind is represented by something we call papel picado. I'm sure you've seen it everywhere you go. You see in the, the uh, all different countries use different types of little flags and different things that represent different things. So our papel picado usually has characters on them that represent the Dia de los Muertos. We place on this, this on here for the wind. So this is, it also represents life. I read somewhere that the papel picado is so delicate and it represents life that even if it's torn, you shouldn't repair it because life is so difficult and sometimes gets torn. So we try to not repair them. So we have now placed the four basic items on here. We have uh, wind, fire, water, and earth, which is the best to just food. So we're going to put a few more items on here. Um, One of the other things that we put on our agenda is the marigolds, the flower. We believe that the flower, because it's such a strong smell, draws the souls back to earth, guides them to where they're supposed to come. And it's also called the flower of 400 lives. And here in Flagstaff, trying to find marigolds when we set up is really hard because it's so cold and they freeze. So a lot of times we have to pre-order them or try and save them from our flower pots or gardens. But that's why we put the marigold because we believe it draws the salts back to earth to where their family is and also it purifies their souls as they come home. Some of the families will take a cross with marigolds and put it in front of their doorways so that when the spirits come, it comes right to their door and it purifies them and then they walk in for the celebration. So that's why we use the marigold. And you'll notice that usually you'll see some of them that they have lots of flowers and multiple, all different colors of flowers. The marigold is just representative of the multiple things that it represents. Purification, the flower of 400 lives for the spirits. But um, you also see kella lilies, you'll see roses, you'll see uh, just a multitude of flowers. Usually they, these ofrendas are, the families will go to the cemetery on the night of November 1st and decorate and have a, have a party there basically. And they will decorate their grave sites. They will bring food, they will bring music. It's a very festive thing. And it's just in memory of, of their loved ones. So you also, people will place these ofrendas in places of honor in their home. And if you have a business, they would, you would, when you walk in, someone would put one in a place of honor in their business. So you will find them in, in multiple places, not just in the home. why we put all the items that are on your agenda. And like I said, the most important things were your candles, the water, the salt, and the flowers. And of course, the picture of your loved ones and whatever you know they enjoyed in life, what kind of work they did, you know, anything that would tell you what kind of life they had. In some traditions, you will see uh, butterflies. And in Michoacan, at this time of year, the monarch butterfly returns to that area and in droves, I guess. And they feel like those are their family member spirits coming home. So they come back every year. So you'll see butterflies sometimes hanging over. Also, you'll see people will have animals on their ofrenda. They feel like they're their spiritual animals. So um, some people have puppies or whatever. We have done an offenda for our pets. Right. So there's nothing wrong with doing that on your own if you would like to do that for your pet as well. But uh, I hope this helps explain a lot of things. One of the things we don't have on here is a, if there is a photo. If there is a photo and you see a face that has been covered, if you see a face that has been covered, that 
understanding is that that person is still living. So only the deceased you belong on the agenda. If you have a photo of someone that's still alive in it, please cover their face and don't let them. Um, I usually put a smiley face or something on the fat face. So, but the ofrenda is specifically for those that are deceased. So, um, if you have any questions, you can go onto the Black Stars and Sisters Races website. We'll have a description of. Um, we'll make sure we get a description on all the items that you need for your ofrenda at home and uh, on the website and on Facebook. So you won't leave any items out. Thank you very much today for having us come into your home today.